Is mixing RAM really as bad as they say? PC builders and enthusiasts have stuck to the same rule for what feels like forever. Never mix RAM kits. But does that still hold up today? I'm about to find out. I paired a 32GB kit of Lexar's DDR4 Thor memory with a 16GB kit of Corsair's DDR4 Vengeance RGB memory to create a mixed 48GB setup. Then I compared it to a standard 32GB setup using over 28 benchmarks in games such as Starfield, Cyberpunk 2077, plus productivity tests in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. Will this mismatch configuration ruin your gaming performance or tank your PC's productivity? And is there anything you need to watch out for when mixing kits from different brands. Stick around because the results might just surprise you. Before jumping into the benchmarks, let's take a quick look at the test system powering these experiments. At the heart of the system is an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X with PBO enabled at a plus 200MHz offset. I undervolted the curve optimizer also by a value of minus 15. I am running an X370 motherboard here, which does mean I'm working with PCI Gen 3, but that won't affect RAM performance. The GPU installed is an XFX Speedster Swift 319 AMD Radeon RX 6800. I have this running with a decently high 700MHz overclock to the core and a mild 112MHz overclock to the the memory. The RAM configurations are where things get interesting though. First, we have a 16GB kit of Corsair's DDR4 Vengeance RGB memory, originally clocked at 3466MHz at CL14. In addition to this, we also have a 32GB kit of Lexar's DDR4 Tor memory clocked at 3200MHz CL16. For the mix setup, I combined the 16GB kit with the 32GB kit and configured them to run at the same speed of 3200MHz CL16, giving us a total of 48GB of mixed memory. I used a 2TB Western Digital Digital SN570 NVMe SSD for the games, and all testing was conducted on the latest X370 chipset drivers, the latest MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon BIOS version, the latest Adrenaline 24.10.1 drivers, and the latest version of Windows 11 23H2 to ensure up-to-date compatibility. And of course, everything was housed within the Fractal Design Mesh IC case, powered by a reliable Corsair RM650X fully modular 80 plus gold power supply. So with all that out of the way, let's get to it. Starting with Starfield. I tested the game at 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolutions using the Ultra preset with FSR3 quality enabled. The results? Virtually identical performance. At 1080p, the mixed RAM setup even slightly outperformed the 32GB configuration, hitting an average of 122.7fps compared to 121.2fps. At 4K, both setups hovered around 63fps, showing no meaningful difference here. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the most visually stunning yet hardware demanding games, the story remained the same. At 1080p, the 32GB setup averaged 119.3fps, while the mixed RAM configuration came in at 117.5fps, barely a 2% difference. Even at 1440 and 4K, the numbers were nearly identical, proving that RAM mixing doesn't hinder performance here whatsoever. In GTA V, a game known for being CPU bound, both configurations held their ground. At 1080p, the average FPS was around 123 for both setups, with 1% lows remaining consistent as well. Once again, no noticeable impact from the mixed RAM. Cyberpunk 2077's demanding nature puts hardware to the test, but even here, the results were consistent. At 1080p, the mixed RAM setup delivered 123.74 FPS on average, while the 32 gigabyte setup hit 124.52 fps. Even at 4k, both setups were neck and neck, averaging just over 40 fps with FSR3 enabled. In Ghost of Tsushima, the mixed RAM configuration and the 32GB setup again showed near identical performance. At 1080p, both setups exceeded 240fps and at 4K the averages hovered around 121fps, proving that the extra 16GB of mixed memory had no impact on gaming performance. Horizon Forbidden West followed the same trend. At 1080p, the 32GB setup hit an average of 108.1fps, while the mixed RAM delivered 108.5fps. Across all tested resolutions, both setups performed almost identically. With Counter Strike 2, a highly competitive shooter, we tested at both low and very high presets. At 1080p low, the mixed RAM setup achieved 440.1 FPS compared to 442.5 FPS with the 32GB setup, a negligible difference. Even at very high settings, both configurations delivered nearly identical results across all resolutions. Switching to Overwatch 2, the fast-paced hero shooter thrives on high frame rates. At 1080p, both setups deliver averages above 350 FPS with 1% lows around 270 FPS. 
a 1440p and 4K, the story stays the same. Mixed RAM makes no meaningful differences in performance here. Next, we tested Valorant, a lightweight but a competitive esports title. At 1080p, frame rates exceeded 500 FPS, with 1% lows above 250 FPS. Even at 4K, both configurations held steady at over 300 FPS, proving that mixed RAM has no perceptible impact on gameplay here. In Fortnite, we tested the 1v1 map using the epic preset at 1080p, 1440p, and also in 4K resolutions. The results? Both configurations performed remarkably similar. At 1080p, the mixed RAM setup managed an average of 176.5 FPS compared to 177.2 FPS on the 32GB configuration. At 4K, both setups dipped to around 52 FPS, showcasing minimal differences in performance. Halo Infinite's demanding ultra preset revealed near identical performance once again for both setups. And at 1080p, the 32GB configuration averaged 143.5 FPS, while the mixed RAM setup followed closely with 143.3 FPS. Even at 1440p and 4K, the differences remained negligible, proving that mixed RAM doesn't impact gameplay here. In Dying Light 2, the mixed RAM configuration and the 32GB setup performed almost identically. At 1080p, the 32GB setup averaged 124.15 FPS, with the mixed RAM configuration trailing slightly at 124.07 FPS. At 4K, both setups hovered around 79 FPS, solidifying the consistency of performance between the two configurations. The Sims 4, a game that isn't particularly demanding, showed no meaningful differences in performance. I do believe there were some sort of issues during this test though, as every single configuration spewed out essentially the same result no matter the resolution. Despite this, both setups hit around 195 FPS on average at 1440p and saved neck and neck across all other tested resolutions, proving that mixed RAM doesn't impact lighter titles. In F123, I tested at both low and very high presets. We saw a near identical performance between the configurations. At 1080p low, the 32GB setup averaged 425.1 FPS, while the mixed setup achieved 427.2 FPS. Even at the very high preset, both configurations delivered almost the same results across all resolutions. Rocket League, known for its smooth optimization, showed minimal differences between setups. At 1080p, the 32GB configuration averaged 495.4 FPS, with the mixed RAM setup just behind at 485.8 FPS. At 4K, both setups averaged around 395 FPS, delivering consistently high performance. In Euro Truck Simulator 2, performance was virtually identical once again across both setups. At 1080p, the 32GB configuration averaged 154.3 FPS, with the mixed RAM coming in slightly higher at 155.1 FPS. The numbers remained consistent at 1440p and 4K as well. American Truck Simulator followed the same trend as ETS 2. At 1080p, the mixed RAM setup delivered 159.9 FPS, marginally outperforming the 32GB configuration at 156.3 FPS. Across all resolutions, the differences remained negligible. In a set of Corsa Competizione, a simulation-heavy title, both setups performed consistently. At 1080p, the mixed RAM configuration achieved 291.8 FPS compared to 295.2 FPS on the 32GB setup. Even at 4K, both configurations hovered around 124 FPS, proving again that mixed RAM doesn't impact performance. With Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown, we tested the game at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions using the Ultra preset with FSR2 quality enabled. At 1080p, the 32GB configuration averaged 56.4 FPS, while the mixed RAM setup trailed slightly at 54 FPS. At 4K, the results were closer, with both setups delivering around 28 FPS on average, showing only a minor performance difference. Next up, Adobe Premiere Pro 2024. In this case, I used the Puget Systems Benchmark version 1.1.0. The mixed RAM configuration completed the test faster at 5 minutes and 22 seconds, compared to 5 minutes and 31 seconds for the 32GB setup. In terms of overall scoring, the mixed RAM setup edged ahead with a score of 7,119 versus 7,008 for the 32GB configuration. This suggests a slight benefit in video editing tasks when mixing RAM sizes. Moving to Adobe Photoshop 2024, the mixed RAM setup once again showed a small lead. It completed the benchmark in 20 minutes and 52 seconds, compared to 21 minutes and 28 seconds for the 32GB setup. The mixed RAM also scored higher, achieving a total score of 7,109 versus 6,833 for the 32GB configuration. These results show minimal but consistent improvements for creative professionals. In Blender's Monster, Junk Shop and Classroom benchmarks, the differences were minimal. For the 
monster test, the 32GB configuration scored 67.87, while the mixed RAM delivered 65.87. The junk shop and classroom benchmarks showed similar trends, with slight variances that wouldn't impact most rendering workloads significantly. Cinebench R24 offered another set of consistent results. For the GPU test, the 32GB setup achieved 9,611 points, while the mixed RAM setup followed closely with 9,377 points. On the CPU multi-core test, the scores were nearly identical at 621 points for the 32GB setup and 611 points for the mixed RAM. In the single core test, the difference was negligible at 91 points versus 189 points. Looking at the overall performance across 19 games tested, the average frame rates on 1% lows were virtually indistinguishable. At 1080p, the 32GB setup averaged 232.21 FPS, with the mixed RAM following at 230.98 FPS. Even at 1440p and 4K, both configurations delivered similar performance, solidifying the fact that mixed RAM doesn't significantly impact gaming performance. Finally, I examined the overall RAM usage across six games played for 30 minutes each. In most titles, peak usage ranged between 14.5 gigabytes and 17.1 gigabytes, with Fortnite hitting the highest mark at 17.1 gigabytes. Both configurations handle these memory demands without breaking a sweat, showing no practical difference in gameplay experience. After conducting an extensive series of benchmarks and tests, Here's what I discovered. Mixing RAM kits from different brands like the Lexar Tor 32GB and Corsair Vengeance RGB 16GB kits doesn't seem to have a significant negative impact on either gaming or productivity performance. Whether you're tackling graphically intensive games like Cyberpunk 2077 or CPU heavy titles like GTA 5, the mixed RAM configuration held its ground and performed nearly identically to the uniform 32GB setup. In fact, in some cases like Fortnite and Starfield, the mixed RAM configuration slightly outperformed the 32GB setup. For productivity tasks such as video editing in Premiere Pro or rendering in Blender, the differences were negligible, with both configurations delivering reliable results. So, what does this mean for everyday users? Well, if you're upgrading your RAM and you can't find the exact RAM 6 that you currently own, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. However, it's important to remember that mixing RAM kits isn't officially recommended by manufacturers. While my testing showed compatibility, you might encounter issues such as instability or even reduced performance, particularly if your RAM 6 have mismatched speeds, timings, or voltages. Here's a closer look at the RAM kits I tested. The Corsair Vengeance RGB kit has faster specs out of the box, but required downclocking to match the Lexar Tor kit speed and latency. With these adjustments, I achieved a stable and fully compatible setup. In another example, pairing a HyperX Fury 2400MHz CL15 kit with the Corsair Vengeance RGB 3466MHz CL14 kit resulted in incompatibility due to mismatch speed and latency. While BIOS tweaks allowed compatibility, the lower speed of 2400MHz limited system performance. My tests demonstrated that with proper BIOS configurations, mixed RAM setups perform reliably well although I would still recommend you to do your research before buying in order to tackle any unnecessary headaches. Ultimately, whether you're a gamer, content creator, or power user, upgrading your RAM, even when mixing kits, can provide significant multitasking benefits without major compromises in performance. Now that I've answered the question as to whether mixing RAM affects performance, I wanna hear from you. Have you ever mixed RAM in a system before? If so, what was your experience? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more hardware analysis type videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.